Few cities in this country can match the, the pop cultural significance of Dallas, Texas. I mean, we're talking about that amazing TV show that played forever. We're talking about the Cowboys, one of the most loved franchises in all of professional sports. I'm talking about the image of guys with big hats smoking big cigars with oil money. But there's other parts to its history. There's a black history to Dallas that not many know about. I'm Nelson George from BlackAtlas.com. Welcome to Dallas. Deep Ellum is an area in Dallas which is very, very popular with tourists. The phrase Deep Ellum really comes from Deep Elm Street. Elm Street is a main drag here, but it's been known as Deep Ellum at least going back to the beginning of the 20th century. In the early part of the 20th century, this was a very strong black community here. Back in uh, 1916, the first building that was made for and by African Americans was constructed here. It was a Knights of Pythias building. All the great blues musicians of the South played here, particularly Lead Belly, Blind Lemon Johnson, Bessie Smith. The last few decades is much more associated with white culture. There's a strong punk rock scene here, actually. Lots of nightclubs, lots of restaurants, art galleries. It's still a really cool destination when you come to the Big D. This is Nelson George with BlackAtlas.com. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas at a very important historic site for black history in this part of the country and for all of us actually, and connecting us to a part of black history a lot of us don't know. We're the co-founders of the National Multicultural Western Heritage Museum and we formerly were the National Cowboys of Color Museum and Hall of Fame. And the reason we changed the name because the museum embraces the whole genre of the Western heritage. So we didn't want to just be a museum about black cowboys or Hispanic cowboys, but we talk about the white, the black, the Hispanic, the Native American, but also just the cowboy history because there were Chinese cowboys and, and such. So we're just researching it, and the museum is a place to gather all the history about the forgotten cowboys here. There are so many individuals who don't really know all of the individuals who made contributions, important contributions, to the settling of the West United States. We think this kind of fills the gap in between slavery and the civil rights mm. movement. What um, Hollywood has taught us the history of the West is basically a lie. Am I right? You know, and that's where we lost it. Yeah. Because all the white cowboys, they know about the black cowboy. What we found out, and Gloria and I growing up did not realize that over 60, 70 percent of cowboys were made up of African American cowboys. The first cowboys were African American, and, and Hollywood stole our heroes. Well, we're in the Buffalo Soldier Room, and this is a very exciting part of our museum's history. We think that it's an excellent way to transition uh, from Western history to the military service because so many of African Americans have made their livelihood through serving in the military. And the Buffalo Soldiers was one of those. It was one of the first units that was created with African Americans to participate in serving the country. There are contemporary cowboys, young men and women who are living a lifestyle right now. Yes, there's over 300 cowboys that are living a life. African-American cowboys that live. A lot of them are in the Houston area, but they come from all over the country, and they perform in the rodeos. This is Nelson George for, for BlackAtlas.com, and I've just got schooled here in Fort Worth. When in Dallas, Texas, a good spot to try is Off the Bone. It's a family-owned and black-owned establishment in business 13 years, two years at this location here at uh, Lamar Alexander. Excellent brisket. Excellent ribs. The ribs are done on pecan wood, gives them a kind of sweeter flavor. And believe me, the meat does come off the bone. Well, Dallas is the glitzy, you know, more pop part of the Dallas Fort Worth area. Fort Worth really still holds on to its cowboy roots. They have an area called the Stockyards, which is full of uh, great shops. You can buy Western gear and statues to some of the great cowboys, including. One of the greatest who's a black cowboy, Mr. Bill Pickett, known as the first bulldogger. I want to read you something about his technique, which is amazing. Bill would leap from the left side of his horse, catch a steer by the horns, twist the animal's neck until he was able to reach over and sink his teeth into the steer's lip. Did you hear what I just said? The brother would bite the, the, the steer, <laughs> and then, that, now that's bulldog, and that's some other Lex level kind of stuff. So that's why he's got a statue here, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just because he's a black cowboy, because he invented a style of, of bulldogging, or what we call these days steer wrestling, 
that was unique, death-defying, and historic. And in fact, he died actually of a head injury uh, while bringing a, a bull down. So he died with his boots on, literally. The Fair Park section of Dallas is a great destination for any tourist to Dallas, Texas. Uh, it's got the Cotton Bowl, which has been homed, once home to the Dallas Cowboys and still home to a very famous annual football game. There's an the IMAX theater here. There's a number of really fine museums, including the African American Museum behind me, which is in this beautiful building with this great sort of round circular rotunda. Great collection of national black history as well as Texas black history. Collection of Sepia Magazine. For those of you who remember, Sepia was a competitor to Ebony Magazine from the 40s into the 1980s. The fairground is a beautiful landscape. It's a great place to chill out and relax. There's, there's even a, you can get on a swan and, and ride through a little lake in the middle of it. So it's a great environment, and this Black History Museum is part of it. Uh, here I am on the field at Cowboy Stadium in Arlington, Texas. I'm standing directly underneath that famous giant screen that everyone knows about. It's an amazing feeling to be here. One of the you gotta say to the Cowboys do really well is allow their fans to get interactive with this new stadium. You see groups of kids here romping on the field, kids kicking field goals. So they allow a lot of access to the facility for their young fans. And as a, when I was a kid, I know this would have been a dream come true. And we're about to enter Jerry Jones' private box. You can see the screen. It's as clear as in your living room, probably clearer and you have the game below you. I've been to a lot of arenas, I'm a big sports fan. This is absolutely one of the most impressive buildings I've been to outside of the Roman Coliseum. During our trip to Dallas, Texas, we've seen cowboys of various descriptions, from old school black cowboys to where the NFL cowboys play today, plus a lot of black history. This is Nelson George for blackatlas.com. Catch you in the air.